Hi, and welcome to the World Beyond Belief. My name is Paul Marco, and we're privileged again today to have Eric Kallstrom uh, visiting us. He has uncovered some incredible information on 911 that I consider to be the capstone. This puts everything in perspective and names names and demonstrates exactly how this was done. So if you're interested in this, and we all should be interested in this because this is the whole impetus for the war on terror. This is the reason that we have the Patriot Act. This is this is the event that triggered everything and it was a false flag. And Eric's going to talk about that. Good morning, Eric. Welcome to the World Beyond Belief. Uh, good morning, Paul, and thanks so much for giving me a chance to talk about this latest uh, uh, kind of discoveries on my part, uh, which, as, I, as you say, I think uh, kind of ties things together in, in a number of ways. Now, let me just introduce myself for the benefit of your listeners. Um, I uh, taught uh, geography, physical geography, at uh, three universities for 30 years. So, you know, I was professor of geography most recently at California State University, Stanislaus in Central Valley, California. And um, uh, as a physical geographer, of course, I was very, you know, on the earth science side of things. So I knew, based on my own research in past climates, uh, which was really the focus of my PhD and master's degree, as well as my subsequent research, um, I knew, you know, pretty much from the get-go that the global warming uh, fraud was a fraud, was a hoax, that, the, that it, the humans have had very little impact on uh, weather or climate by burning fossil fuels, driving our cars, etc. However, I soon discovered later that the real story behind the story of the global warming hoax is the military use of geoengineering, weather warfare, and uh, weather modification. When 911 happened, I, I you know, having gone through the Vietnam era and being used to, you know, extraordinary government lying, right. uh, it quickly occurred to me that this was also probably, a, you know, a, some kind of a hoax. And so I, I wrote an article in the fall of 911 uh, entitled. Uh, 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 Reflections on the origins of 911. Uh, three scenarios and it's about a 60 page paper and we had a little peace group in Crestone Colorado where I live and one of the people in our peace group uh, got a website put up and they put it on the website and pretty soon it was it was you know it was around mm -hmm. as kind of the magic of the internet uh, um, so the bottom line is that I've got these two very 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 large websites now I've retired uh, from teaching and I've had more time to, to work on this um, one of them is 911nwo.com, NWO of course standing for New World Order, and the other one being naturalclimatechange.us. So the first one exposes the 911 hoax, fraud, inside job, false flag, state sponsored synthetic terror event, uh -huh. and uh, the second one exposes the uh, the fraudulent science, uh, really, behind uh, the uh, man-caused global warming scenario, and uh, also uncovers perhaps what the story behind the story is, which is that a lot of that funding has gone into geoengineering research and actual operations. Geoengineering is the idea that, you know, humans can redesign the, uh, the climate system and cause earthquakes, uh, move, move uh, uh, storm fronts, uh, you know, create floods and create droughts, uh, move hurricanes, uh, juice them up, uh, knock them down, even even create tornadoes. Um, and again, there's a lot of information on this on my naturalclimatechange.us site. Now, so here we are in a world, I, I'm in America, you're in Ecuador, yeah. we're still in the same world. Um, you're from uh, America, so you're right. totally conversant in all of these issues. Uh, but uh, here we are in a, in a country, in a world in which we're being lied to on a colossal scale. Um, simply colossal. You know, it's, it's like uh, Joseph Goebbels of, uh, you know, Nazi Germany said, you know, he was the minister of 
propaganda. <laughs> Uh, he said, you know, a great nation needs great propaganda. And, of course, Germany had fantastic propaganda during the Nazi era. And America has much better propaganda because we call it the news. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Russia, Russia, Soviet Union had good propaganda, but everybody knew it was, you know, coming propaganda. out of one newspaper. So everybody knew it was lies. Yeah. In America, most people seem to be still, or a very large segment seem to be deceived. And so this, of course, is uh, the point of my research. Uh, Thomas Jefferson said, uh, you know, a nation that, um, uh, that wants to live in a state of ignorance, uh, in a state of civilization, wants what never, can, what never has been and never can be. Uh, so if you've got your people looking in all the wrong directions, it's pretty easy to slip some big things by them. Uh, and, of course, uh, this is what fascist uh, totalitarian governments tend right. to do. Uh, so the, the basic thesis that I'd like to share with you tonight, or to, to this morning, we're, we're, to, <laughs> we're this morning, uh, is uh, based on a couple DVDs and YouTubes that I recently watched, which just pulled things together for me. And those include uh, Jason Berman's DVD called um, invisible, invisible Empire, A New World Order Defined, uh, which has a great interview with Peter Dale Scott. Of, uh, uh, he wrote a book about the JFK assassination and deep politics in the U.S. Um, and then Webster Tarpley has an interview on Guns and Butter in which he discusses uh, his book, uh, 911 Synthetic Terrorism Made in the USA. He's gone now through five... Uh, editions of that, and in each edition he has, by his own historical research, he's an economic historian, he's a, he's a real academic, right. uh, as well as Peter Dale Scott, they're both PhD, you know, researchers, uh, who I tend to, you know, kind of uh, give a lot of credibility to. Sure. Uh, Webster Tarpley has a table on his website, and which I think he has it in his fifth edition of uh, Synthetic Terrorism, made in the USA, uh, of 46 drills and exercises and war games that were uh, occurring either on or leading up to 9-1-1. And, by, and he's, he's following newspaper accounts and he's, you know, slowly but surely uh, adding to the list. He had five for his first edition, four or five uh, uh, um, exercises or drills as they call them. And then uh, uh, by the time he did his fifth edition, he's up to 46 plus, and I imagine there are quite a few more that need that, yeah. that haven't been divulged. But the picture you get then is of a government that heavily relies on well, a military especially that heavily relies on drills uh, to plan out their operations. And I know you've done a, an excellent program on on the Jade Helm drills of this yeah. year in the last year. Mm -hmm. Uh, which are very concerning. And the reason they're concerning is because although the military does drills as a matter of course, something can happen uh, and uh, somebody high up can order that the drill become live, right. but live. And that happened uh, on the London 7-7 bombings. That happened on 9-1-1 when these uh, about 25 drills were going on the day. And they all of a sudden became a live, quote unquote, terrorist event. So you go from a drill in which individuals in the military think they are, you know, just drilling a scenario that could possibly happen, and they're trying to work out the details of their response right. to uh, protect America. So then most of the people in the chain of command of the military would not be aware, right. perhaps while it's happening, that the drill has now been flipped live and a real terrorist event is occurring. Um, so this is a, a very, very, very pernicious and clever way to uh, control things from the very top. And uh, Webster Tarpley, the historian, uh, has written books on the, you know, the unauthorized biography of George H.W. Bush, the unauthorized biography of Obama. He's gotten into what uh, Scott calls deep politics. And uh, he says, he calls the perpetrators of, of these false flag terrorist events, calls them the rogue network. They've mm -hmm. also been called the invisible government, the shadow government, etc. And uh, sometimes now we even call them the continuity of government. 
In other words, the government which is unconstitutional, which can and is prepared to take power in the case of a declared emergency by the president, uh, he can use anything pretty much to declare emergency based on all these executive orders. And uh, this would then impose martial law and a dictatorship and the, the uh, tossing out of the uh, American Constitution and the destruction of the American Republic as we know it. So um, what, what I think what, what really, uh, I can give examples of some of these drills. Uh, there, uh, let me just refer your listeners to three of my most recent posts which are on my 911nwo.com website. The first one is Appendix 28, Behind Operations 911, and quote-unquote Operation Creston Baca, question mark, which is where I live, and we'll do a little tie in there maybe later. Okay. Uh, and then colon, the CFR CIA nexus. We, we had an interview, excellent interview, a couple, about a week or two ago about Alan Dulles, the first director of the CIA, and he also was a founder of the CFR. So CIA basically does the bidding of the CFR, the Rockefellers, the Rothschilds, the elite, uh, also the Wall Street uh, Power Center, also in, uh, sometimes called, as Tar Tarpley calls it, the rogue network or continuity of government. And also, this got me into uh, looking at the Doomsday Plan. There is a very interesting web or, uh, YouTube on uh, now. You can just uh, punch in the American Doomsday Plan, and uh, it's all about the Air Force. Well, and that's the that's the last part of the title, Appendix 28, and the U.S. Air Force, because it becomes very clear when you look at these 46 drills that NATO is involved in a very large percentage of them. That's the North American Air, uh, what is it? Uh, <laughs> well, it's got to have defense in there. I yeah. don't know what the O would be. I've, I've got that on my third article, which is Summary of Tarpley's The 46 Drills, Operations, and War Games, and Activities of 911. The second article is, is a transcription that, I, that I've just recently posted, a transcription of the 46 Drills, Operations, War Games, and Exercises of 911, which is this Webster Tarpley interview with Guns and Butter. Um, so, uh, yeah, and, and uh, the, w w let's see here. So, uh, I, I actually did quite a bit of, uh, or a little bit of, legwork on trying to figure out what all these alphabet soup acronyms are. Right. North American Aerospace Defense Command. That's NATO. Okay. And one of its main bunkers is, is in Cheyenne Mountain in Colorado, right outside Colorado Springs, probably about 80 miles as the crow flies from where I live in Crestone, Baca, Colorado. And then uh, other, other players, uh, and, and this is the nice thing about Tarpley's uh, um, uh, table. You can go to Webster Tarpley's site. You can look at his table. There, there's a website for it there. It's a... Uh, uh, it's, uh, I can give it to you. It's HTTP colon double slash tarpley dot net slash docs slash drills underline of underline 911 PDF. And it's all in that table. And as I say, I'm looking now at an article that I just fixed up last couple of days on a summary of Tarpley's uh, table here, which uh, you, you get into the nitty gritty, well, the devil is the details, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. <laughs> and the, and, the, and the, uh, these are all drills that in which the military was looking at scenarios. And all of them have a timeline. All of them have a uh, certain number of participants. And they have certain uh, dr uh, goals that are enunciated. So you can look on this table and you really find out uh, who's behind 911, and it's not encouraging. You have right. NORAD, you have uh, NEEDS, the Northeastern Air Defense Sector, you have SEEDS, the Southeastern Air Defense Sector, you have STRATCOM, the U.S. Strategic Command, um, which is one of nine unifying combatant commands of the United States Department of Defense. Of course, Cheney was the Secretary of Defense at that time. You have AWACS, the Air Warning and Control System. You see the predominance of Air Force here. Right. You see the NRO, the National Reconnaissance Office. 
Uh, you see the Air, Command, Air Combat Command, the U.S. Space Command, the U.S. SOCOM, SOCOM, U.S. Special Operations Command, U.S. CENTCOM, U.S. Central Command, right. um, FEMA, Federal Emergency Manage Management Agency, which we'll talk a little bit more about later because right. you, you know you're very familiar with that. Uh, USJFCOM, U.S. Joint Forces Command, okay, Joint Forces, Army, Navy, right. Air Force, the whole works, Coast Guard, uh, the uh, DIA, Defense Intelligence Agency, uh, there's one that's called LIWA, I didn't find that one, uh, on, the, on the Wikipedia, FBI, the New York Office of Emergency Management was involved in these drills that went live, the New York Police and Fire Departments were involved, the FAA, the Federal Agent Aviation Administration, the Coast Guard, the Army, the Navy, the PTOG, the Proactive Preemptive Operations Group, the U.S. Department of Transportation, U.S. Air Force bases, Andrews Air Force Base, uh, Nellis Air Force Base in Nevada, Offutt Air Force Base in Nebraska, Barksdale Air Force Base in Louisiana, Minot Air Force Base in North Dakota. Amazing. Wakeman Air Force Base in Missouri and Wright-Patterson Air Force Base in Dayton, Ohio, and the Keflavik Air Force Base in Iceland, and the Dobbins Air Force Base in Georgia. All these were involved in the drills on the day or leading up to, and then the New York City, the government, you know, Giuliani's New York right. City was involved. Uh, there was a number of forts around Washington, D.C., Fort Belvoir, Fort Monmouth in New Jersey that, that were involved in this, the Miami-Dade County Police Department, the Westmoreland County, Pennsylvania, uh, where Shanksville is located, Cheyenne Mountain, Colorado, NORAD plays a very important role, which we'll just discuss, the Fiduciary Trust Company of the World Trade Center on the 97th floor on the South Tower, plus about 52 other unnamed agencies are all involved based on Tarpley's research, which of course builds on other people's research and newspaper accounts uh, of what, uh, what the drills were. So again, uh, drills are something that the military does, you know, to, to do its legitimate function right. of protecting America. But they, in a very, very hierarchical system, all of these chains of command can be subverted into uh, 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 taking the drills live or flipping them live. Right. And when that happens, of course, then the, the plan to defend against a terrorist attack can actually turn into a terrorist attack. And uh, if you look at, uh, I'm going to just outline the drills here, and I think you'll see, not, not, not one by one, but by groups, and I think that you will, and I'll give a couple of examples, you will see that what they've done is they have drilled every single aspect and meme of the 911 terrorist attack scenario. So all of these things were very carefully prepared by military people and county people. First responders were brought in. Uh, the planning that went into this thing was phenomenal. Um, and remember, Senator Bob Kerry uh, said at one point, well, it was a 30-year plan. Right. Well, I think that's probably about right. It's, it probably was a 30-year plan. So, you know, this, and, and this is a coup, uh, according to Webster Tarpley. All of a sudden, the government is, is going down one railroad track, and it's, it's jerked onto another set of tracks. And now it's going in a new direction. Exactly. And uh, this is the event that catalyzed that uh, takeover, really, by the, uh, uh, the Project for a New American Century neoconservatives who were running really essentially the, the Clinton, uh, Bush II, uh, Obama uh, administrations. Uh, so, uh, but of course they are just one, you know, aspect of this. And, and just to go back in history, are there precedents for this? Well, we talked last time in our interview about Alan Dulles about the 1934 coup attempt by Wall Street, in mm -hmm. which Alan Dulles's clients would have approached uh, Brigadier General Smedley Butler in 1934 and asked him to lead a march of 500,000 troops on Washington to take over the Roosevelt government and turn it into a fascist government. So that was a pretty simple plan compared to this. This is <laughs> this, this plan right. is amazing. It's amazing. I mean, you know, I used to think those intelligence guys weren't very smart, but but now I see that those intelligence guys are very smart. Um, and of course, they've got a lot of power. So, so Tarpley, like me, and in our discussion last time, really would put the focus of the the conspiracy 
uh, in Wall Street, the city of mm -hmm. London, the intelligence agencies that serve them, including CIA uh, and NSA and all the other alphabet soup, and, and Tel Aviv now, because that's really the triangle. Tel Aviv, London, and Washington. And Washington really is, is just, you know, Washington and New York, almost no difference now. Right. Um, it's, all, it's all one thing, yeah, because the New York uh, Wall Street people seem to just dominate the Washington scene with all the lobbyists, etc. But okay, so we have about 12 drills which focused on the World Trade Center attack. And these were some of them before uh, the, the uh, day of the day of, and some of them were on the day of. Let me just give you a couple of them here to give an example of these 12. And I'm sure there's more. Um, okay, NORAD, which we've already defined, and NEETS, the Northeast Air Defense Sector, as well as U.S. and Canada on the day of 9/11 have live fly hijacking and air defense drill scenario with uh, multiple hijacks, diversion, and confusion. Well, of course, that's exactly what happened. Right. Uh, tremendous confusion, so much so that the air traffic controllers didn't know what was happening. Even the people reading the computer screen at the Northeast Air Defense Sector didn't know what was happening. And, and, and one reason is because the people over at uh, Cheyenne Mountain were inserting false radar blips on their screen. And they would ask, well, what's real? And what's, uh, you know, what's a drill? What's a false blip? What's right. a drill? What's real? So, you know, if, if we want to know why uh, the, you know, the air defense system of the most powerful country in the world uh, was completely silent for the one hours and 45 minutes of the attacks of 911, right. it's, it's here. Uh, the, the, the actual stand down order uh, is recorded from the commander of the Northeast uh, Air Defense Sector, and it's really, really kind of crazy. We'll go back over to Operation 911. We hit that. We scroll down to Appendix 28 behind Operations 911, and then we go down to uh, you know uh, the quotes, the first thing, and. Uh, no, that's that's not the place. I'm sorry. It's no. Uh, we, we should go not to that first of these three articles, but we should go to the second of these three articles, which is the uh, transcription of Webster Tarpley's interview on guns and butter on the 46 drills, operations, and uh, war games and exercises of 911. Okay, so. Uh, here is the introductory clip, Webster Tarpley quoting this individual. Uh, the stand on order that you have is, is, we have is a Colonel Marr, the commander of the Northeast Air Defense Sector. There is a, a request to him to launch all your planes, and he says, no, I won't do that because if I launch all my planes now, they will all run out of gas at the same point. Go figure. <laughs> how, how does that? <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, he gets away with saying this stuff because the 911 commission is completely, uh, you know, yeah, in, on in on it. So I'm keeping them all on the runway, he said. This is the key to why for one hour and 45 minutes plus, there's no effective air defense in this highly critical and usually highly militarized area. Right. And when he does launch a couple of planes from Langley Air Force Base towards the end of the operation, he sends them out over the Atlantic Ocean. So this is Webster Tarpley's summary of that. You right. know, meanwhile, we are all told on the news that, you know, Cheney, you know, uh, you know, snapped his head around and he right. said, well, you know, that, that he was in charge. Well, uh, Webster Tarpley makes fun of that notion because he thinks that actually what who was in charge of coordinating all these things was a private military defense contracting agency, probably perhaps in Cheyenne Mountain. Uh, with at least a bank of a hundred, uh, you know, computer, uh, highly computerized screens to coordinate the operation. Right. So we again, we're always given the cover story, and right. then those of us who can't accept that then have to dig much deeper to right. find the real story, the story behind the story. So uh, yeah, I just thought it'd be worth to have the uh, the the direct uh, quote there. Uh, f from uh, Colonel Marr at the Northeast Air Defense Sector, uh, and also Tarpley's uh, uh, interview with uh, uh, with uh, 
guns and butter. Okay, right. so uh, to give a, another example of the the WTC attacks, the World Trade Center drills, uh, there were about 12 of them at least. I know more myself just from Whoa. doing my research, but we'll stick with this. Um, well, yeah, I mean, in, in 1998, they, uh, uh, I believe he was a Saudi Arabian, uh, planted a bomb at the World Trade Center, didn't he? And he, right. and he did some damage and he killed some people. Well, you know, from testimony by him and others, we now know that the FBI was, was handling him. Right. And gave him the ingredients for the bomb and paid him to do it. Mm -hmm. So, again, a kind of contracting agent then from the Middle East to do the FBI's dirty work in which they actually, you could say, rehearsed uh, the, the blowing down, uh, the blowing up of a building. I guess that's uh, a little bit different from what I'm talking about. You know, it's the World Trade Center attack. Okay, so here's a um, National Reconnaissance Office drill in Ch Chantilly, Virginia. 911 simulated plane crash into high-rise government building as well as satellite imaging. Okay, um, here's another one, Red X, that's the Operation Red X, Recognition, Evaluation, and Decision-Making Exercise. Who's in on this? The New York City Office of a Management, uh, Emergency Management, the Fire Department of New York City, the Police Department of New York City, the FEMA, FBI, and this was on May 11th, 2001, and the scenario was a plane crashed and a building collapses in New York City. Well, of course, that's World Trade Center attack and demolition. Yeah. So that gives you an idea of those, you know, that that meme, if you will. Now they use that word meme. I kind of hate it. But uh, uh, the next meme uh, or, or theme, I guess, is uh, divert the fighter planes out of Washington, Boston and New York, which is the airspace involved in the Northeastern Air Defense Sector's airspace. There's six drills going on there to get the real fighter pilots out of there yeah. so that you know, these, these Air Force pilots are chosen, you know, kind of be the top guns, you know. So a lot of these guys would just would just instinctively go get the bad guy. Right. I mean that's that's the whole training. And they've got the they've got the they've got the equipment to do it. And they're hot, you know, it's like right. all these great movies, you know. Well, how do you get those guys out of there so they don't screw up the plan? Right. Well, Operation Southern Watch, which was right up through nine one one diverts the 174th fighter wing of the New York Air National Guard to the Sultan Air Base in Saudi Arabia. Amazing. <laughs> to impose a no-fly zone over southern Iraq. Operation Northern Watch through 911 diverts six jet fighters from the Langley Air Force Base and sent them to Encirclic, Encirlic, Encirlic, uh -huh. uh, in Iceland. Uh, no, excuse me, Encirlic is in Turkey. Uh -huh. uh, there's Iceland comes in later, but Interlake Air Force Base in Turkey to impose a no-fly zone over northern Iraq, and then uh, there's a whole bunch of them that get them way up north. Operation Northern Guardian uh, involves the Kev Kevlavik Air Force Base in Iceland uh -huh. through 911 and diverts again flighters from Langley Air Force Base, Virginia, uh, uh, to counter a Russian bomber drill. Okay, so there's. There's all kinds of these. There's a, the Red Flag, uh, Operation Red Flag, Nellis Air Force Base, Nevada. hundred pilots uh, are involved, and it diverts most F-15s of the 71st Fighter Squadron, Langley Air Force Base, Virginia. Uh, but it gets, it gets them out of the way. I, I'm not sure. Uh, also, the Flight Squadron of Andes, Andres Air Force Base, is also depleted. Uh, the Andrews Air Force Base local drill 911 diverts three F-16s to North Carolina. So you get the picture. Get get right. these, these. Get them these, out. These, but get them out of there. And that's of course another reason why we right. had no air defense in that right. 140, one hour and 45 minutes. Okay. The next meme or theme is Pentagon attacks, and you have six drills there. Uh, there is a thing called the Pentagon Mascal which is a, a kind of an operation I define at the top of this particular uh, um, uh, article or post here. And let's see if I can find it here. to do with uh, killing people at the Pentagon. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this stuff, you can't believe this stuff. Um, oh, it's all uh, coincidence. This is just a coincidence. This, oh, this is all coincidence. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's zero chance of that. Absolutely <laughs> zero. Uh, uh, the NORAD drill 1999 to 2001 hijack aircraft hit many targets including the World Trade Center and the Pentagon under Moscow 
Amalgam Virgo 01, U.S. Canada, multi-agency drill, NORAD, SEEDS, Coast Guard, Army, Navy, June 1st, 2001. Unmanned aerial vehicle drone launched from a rogue fighter, freighter, excuse me, in the Gulf of Mexico, or cruise missile from barge in Atlantic Ocean. Right. Uh, is fired upon the Pentagon. Well, that's what happened. Uh, you know, if you want to know what happened to, to the Pentagon, a missile hit it, or it might have been uh, something like that, you know, cruise missile, something like that. And, of course, then they lied and said it was, a, you know, 757 or 767 or whatever. But uh, this is uh, um, the Joint Based Expeditionary Connectivity Center Mobile Radar Command Center was also tested. These guys are very, very, very thorough, yeah. very high tech. Um, the Positive Force 01, the USJF, the Joint Force Command, US Central Command, US uh, um, Special Operations Command, and 40 agencies on April 17th, 26, 2001, are testing continuity of government. And, uh, and they're testing attacks on transportation. As we're going to see in a minute, my, my hypothesis is that one of the main drills that was occurring on 911 that we haven't been told about was plans for continuity of government. Where there's only one day in American history where the plans for continuity of government have actually been, it has actually been, has gone live. It has right. been tested. And that, of course, is September 11th. So uh, we're going to see in a little while all the events that lead up to 911 as a drill for continuity of government in position of martial law. And uh, one of the scenarios in Positive Force 01 is a terrorist group hijacking a commercial airline and flying into the Pentagon. Well, there again, the Pentagon yeah. attack. Okay, <clears throat> next uh, little group here is uh, plane hijackings and simulated telephone calls. There are six drills that, that uh, fulfill that uh, scenario. One is by the FAA, Federal Aviation Agency, and the Miami-Dade County Police Department. A toxic chemical agent and the simulated release of radiation and radiological contamination, as well as indoctrination of first responders. So they use a word like indoctrination. So right. these first responders have to be fooled into thinking they're going to do some you know, heroic stuff, when right. in fact they're, you know, part of a part of a very well planned right. uh, terrorist Deception. attack. Deception. Like U.S. Department of Transportation, August 31st, 2001, their crisis management center drilled hijacks and simulated telephone calls. So all these, this was, as Tarpley says, this was to pull in the average American who doesn't want to look at the details here, <clears throat> but is emotionally impacted by, you know, Mrs. Olson calling Mr. Olson and, right. you know, oh, my God, you know, she's going to die and that sort of thing. Right. And, of course, these, these were all folk, faked. They were done by actors on the ground, and then, then we hear those voices. Uh, so uh, this is a very, very extensive operation. Right. Um, it, uh, again, on that same theme, Vigilant Guardian, NORAD Seeds Needs, September 10th, 2001. Um, there's a hijacking of a plane from Cuba by asylum seekers, and it lands at the Dobbins Air Force Base in Georgia. Well, that's just more clutter, isn't it? Mm -hmm. um, uh, Vigilant Guardian NORAD needs September 6th, Seoul to Anchorage flight hijacked by Lin Po to Seattle. These kinds of things, just to kind of muddy the water, uh, make everything confusing. And then there's four drills to control the patsies. And, of course, Muhammad Atta and the 19 sides right. of the patsies. And uh, one is Able Danger, the Defense and Intelligence Agency, the U.S. SOCOM, uh, between December 1999 and 2001. They manipulate Al-Qaeda, which is, you know, just a group of, it's, a, it's basically a phone book full of operators in right. the Middle East that have money that the CIA has used as assets. But oh. now, of course, we're told different things. So it's a dating, data mining program for control of patsies. And then the Stratus IV operation, the DIA, Defense Intelligence Agency, is, operates on patsies who are out of the box, so patsy control. Uh, door hop galley, the DIA, again, uh, 19, uh, December 1999 to 2001. This was mostly secret, but 
Tarpley thinks it's probably Patsy control. And then there's the proactive, preemptive operations group, P2OG. Um, kind of unknown, but uh, the dates, but stimulation reactions of terrorists. Stimulating, excuse me, stimulating reactions of terrorists. In other words, handling them, controlling right. them. Now, this is the scary part. That is quite a revelation. <laughs> this is the scary part. <laughs> this is scary. Yeah, we haven't got to <laughs> Yeah, the rest part. of it is normal. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead. Well, according to Tarpley, the, the immediate geopolitical goal of this this coup and this you know false flag terrorist operation right. was the U.S. wanted to invade Afghanistan and Pakistan. Afghanistan immediately, and Pakistan kind of you know over the years. Right. And uh, they were you know concerned. All these planners, these smart people, concerned that maybe Russia might object because we're moving into their right their sphere their continent, their, their Asia. <clears throat> And, or China, and both of those have nuclear weapons. So mm -hmm. how, to, how to disable that response? Well, Global Guardian, STRATCOM, the Offutt Air, Air Force Base, Nebraska, uh, Barksdale Air Force Base, all these Air Force bases, um, did a nuclear war fighting scenario called Armageddon. And they actually drilled and made moves like they were moving to attack Russia. Wow. And of course the Russians would be freaking out saying oh my god they're doing this this and this and that's what they would do under an attack and so of course that put the Russians uh, on a you know state of high alert right um, amalgam warrior 911 on the day large live fly air defense and air intercept tracking and surveillance drill air defense against foreign retaliation of course that'd be the Russians a global guardian computer networking attack 911 enemy forces are war dialed now this is really fascinating the, the the enemy forces are told they're informed by war dialing uh, through Stratcom's telephone and fax systems that there's a bad insider who has access to the C3 system, which is the missile launch option. So in other words, not only is America maybe going to attack, but they've got a they've got a real rogue element, a bad insider who might just do it. So obviously this is nuclear brinksmanship right you know not going to play with the lives of hundreds of millions maybe billions of people so we can get this thing pulled off so that's the really scary part if you meet if you ask me that yeah the next one, which is continuity of government uh which includes installing new leaders and a successful coup right with three drills uh, on that meme or theme stratcom strategic advisory committee at all these air force bases they put three E-4B National Airborne Operations Center planes, also known as the Doomsday Plane or oh. the Looking Glass, with Looking Glass uh, technology, and they put them up in the air. And passengers on these planes actually included Warren Buffett and Brent Scowcroft, two, Scowcroft, uh, two very, very highly placed uh, insiders in the secret government, I suppose. Right. Um, so, in a sense, they were drilling for, well, let's see, if we, if we really pull off this continuity of government uh, coup and wipe out or decapitate was the word they used back in the 80s, decapitate the constitutional government and put in our own uh, revolutionary government or our own uh, dictatorship, uh, we want to have those people ready on hand to just take the ball, you know. So, in this case, let's put Warren Buffett and, and Brent's... A Scowcroft in, in, right. the, in, in the command seat, and they actually drilled that. Another one was Positive Force 01, U.S. Uh, Joint Forces Command, U.S. CENTCOM, etc., uh, and 40 agencies. I think I mentioned this. This is a continuity of government attack, which includes an attack on the transportation system and terrorist groups hijacking commercial airlines and flying them into the Pentagon. Right. Positive Force, uh, um, yeah. So uh, then the next one is uh, in invasion of Afghanistan and Pakistan. Well, now we're getting down to the geopolitics. Right. We want Afghanistan because we want a pipeline that will take oil and gas out of the stands that are recently uh, liberated by the breakup of the Soviet Union, yeah. the Cash Basin area. We want those to go uh, to our boats and to our clients. We want to control the spigot of right. oil and gas. And so Afghanistan, even though it's incredibly rough terrain, 
you know, you look at a map, it's flat. You just draw a line. Right. And make a pipeline. Well, that's, you know, they haven't made any progress in Afghanistan in the last 15 years of war. That's what the military experts say, the people right. in command. They've made no progress, except they've guarded the, guarded the pipelines. Right. Um, and grew a lot of poppy. Grew a lot of poppy. They've grown a lot of opium, heroin, et cetera. That's, right. that's now the center of, of, of uh, that trade in the world. Um, so a dozen agencies on April 17th through 26th and NORAD uh, cooperated in the Unified Vision 01 operation, which is the invasion of Afghanistan and Pakistan. And they prepared it by calling it Operation Enduring Freedom. <laughs> it occurred on October 2001. So as soon as, you know, of course, uh, 911 happened, what happened in, within an hour, Osama bin Laden was blamed by, you know, right. the, the top TV networks. Everybody agreed that Osama bin Laden did it. Bush got up there, said, you know, this is not going to stand. We're going to, we're going to, you know, want it dead or alive. And so then in October, one month later, we launched this uh, invasion uh, and occupation of uh -huh. Afghanistan, which is still occurring. Uh, now, here's an interesting one. The FBI CIA anti-terrorist task force was moved in a drill to California, to Monterey, uh, which supposedly diverted top FBI, CIA, and a terrorist uh, special operations agents, along with a lot of heavy equipment, from the Boston, New York City, Washington area, where they might have done some good, theoretically, right, to, theoretically. to, to, uh, to Monterey. Well, I, I tend to look at this as kind of covering their butts, but I don't know, you know. Uh, because if they've got something like this, uh, it does kind of cover their butts. You know, well, we, we had to be at a conference in Monterey, That's so right. sorry, guys. You know. That's right. <laughs> but, of course, of course they knew it was coming down because they're involved in planning the other steps. You know? Right. So uh, another one, the test of readiness at NORAD, which is in Cheyenne Mountain. It's a drill. Vigilant Guardian NORAD annual readiness drill occurred on the day of 911. Uh, this was called... Uh, uh, able danger as well, full battle staff levels to test entire organizations. And those three-foot doors that, you know, close at the mouth of, of the underground bunker there, closed right. on that day for the first and only time. Uh, uh, and as we said earlier, it was Cheyenne, Cheyenne Mountain that actually inserted the false radar blips into the needs uh, computer screens. So Tarpley makes the assumption or the conclusion uh, that uh, the putschists, or the coup leaders right. were right there in Cheyenne Mountain, and uh, because they're doing these things like putting in false radar blips. Now that's a that's a that's a hypothesis, but it, it seems to fit a lot of a lot of data. Uh, and I'm not going to you know say for sure that that's the case, but it seems like it's very possible. Another group is uh, indoctrination of first responders. Um, including 600 local first responders in the Shanksville, Pennsylvania area, um, as well as New Jersey on 911. Uh, at the, uh, they, they, were, they were prepped for the 911 invasion or, or attacks. Another one was uh, assemble and silence unreliable outside contractors at the WTC. So you got, you got these other businesses in the World Trade Center, how are you going to manage them? So uh, the fiduciary trust company on the 97th floor of the South Tower uh, was meeting, called a meeting to assemble and silence all the unreliable outside contractors. Uh, and then you have the aerial surveillance of the president during the coup, the day of. Uh, this is conducted by AWACS, the Air Warning and Control System Drill which went live, and it was ordered by NORAD Commander Larry Arnold on 911. Two AWACS aircrafts from Tinker Air Force Base, Oklahoma, were sent over Washington, D.C., and Florida to surveil the Capitol and the President during the coup. So these are those, you know, big spy planes, the big white planes that we've perhaps read about, uh, I, I assume, uh, you know, kind of a Air Command, Pentagon Command system in the sky. Uh, you can read about those big white planes on many articles. And then there's a response to biochemical attacks, which might have something to do with the anthrax, I don't know. And then there's a couple that are unknown. But, but the major players here are NORAD and the Air Force and all the intelligence agencies. And uh, right. again, my scenario here is that 
Let me let me get down to the continuity of government scenario, and then let's have a discussion about this. Right. Um, if you don't mind. Uh, remember the good old Iran Contra scandal of the eighties? Ah, uh, good old Iran Contra. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, let me sum it up real quickly. President Reagan had just been elected in uh, nineteen eighty. Took office January nineteen eighty one, I think. Uh, within sixty nine days, there was an assassination attempt on his life by a guy named John Hinckley who happens to that family's family friends, close family friends in the oil business with the Bush family. Golly, right. George H.W. Bush is the vice president who would stand to gain from the disablement or the death of, of Reagan. Well, it turns out, according to Tarpley, uh, that this also occurred during a drill. The actual assassination attempt occurred during a presidential succession drill in which they were practicing the succession of presidents. And, uh, well, there's John Hinckley, who's probably somewhat mind-controlled or paid off or something. Uh, but he tried to cook Reagan. He didn't, but he, he did a lot to um, incapacitate Reagan. Reagan was already an old guy. And he, to me, he was never that smart. He was an actor. Yeah, he's so an he actor. Perfect, yeah, he was perfect at projecting, you know, what the power elite wanted people to believe. But anyway, so I would I would suggest that George H. W. Bush, son of Prescott Bush, son of Samuel Prescott Bush, um, three generations of skull and bones, I would suggest that George H. W. Bush was the de facto head of the country for almost all of the Reagan administration, as well as his own uh, presidential administration of of only four years. So. Close to 12 years for George H.W. Bush, who's a key player in all this and everything else. Um, and his family has four generations of dealing death and destruction through the armaments industry. They're, they're all bound up with the military industrial complex. So anyway, uh, uh, so George Bush is the one who really kind of oversees what's happening in the 80s. Um, he had been the head of the CIA in 1976. And he was all too familiar with the continuity of government uh, scenario. He used those powers during that time. And uh, he put together a group, including Richard Cheney, Donald Rumsfeld, and Oliver North, uh, to make plans uh, uh, for the, what's the word here? My own, uh, <laughs> I can't even remember already. Uh, make plans for the suspension of government. Uh, now, concomitant with that, simultaneously, and this involves a whole bunch of military protocols and drills like the others, one of those was Operation Rex, uh, which is short for Readiness Exercise of 1984, and it was a classified drill and scenario to detain large numbers of Americans who are deemed, quote, national security threats. Right. If... The president declares a state of emergency, and, and you go after these people for their subversive activities. This was reported on in 1984 by the Spotlight newspaper and the Herald, Miami Herald, or yeah, Miami Herald in 1987. And then it came out in the Iran Contra hearings of 1987 uh, when uh, Oliver North, who was a key man on all this stuff, uh, and I'll operate, I'll outline the Iran Contra in a second. But Oliver North was asked if he'd been involved in drawing up the continuity of government plans. And his lawyer said, you know, Mr. Speaker, who was Daniel Inouye of Hawaii, and, and, he, and Inouye came to his rescue and says, well, I don't think we can discuss that here. You know. And so it was shown, but he said, we can discuss that in private, but not in public. So it was shown, yeah, it's a pretty good indication that we're talking about, con that he was working on a plan for continuity of government. Right. Uh, which actually resulted in the formation of the Federal Emergency Military Authority. That's what FEMA was at first, the Federal Emergency Military Authority. Now we wow. changed the Federal Emergency uh, uh, Management Agency. But it was military authority before it was management agency, and it had to do with all these concentration camps that people keep, you know, right. pointing out in this country you know so they, they've got their they've got their plans for continuity of government to, to do what to do now with those subversives and I know you've done an excellent program on the Jade Helm uh, which just brings all of this right up to date uh, on a more massive scale so uh, 
Yeah, and then Iran culture, which is which, which precipitated this Senate hearing, was uh, uh, the U.S. government was uh, doing all kinds of shady. Well, the CIA, as usual, as the usual. CIA and their business contacts were in fact uh, um, arming Iran, which is supposed to be our enemy. Israel too, of course. Yeah, uh, was a big player in this, and uh, of course it was the Bush and Reagan administration that managed to. Uh, convince the Iranian government to hold on to the hostages until the day that Ronald Reagan was right. released and thus ensure the election for, for Reagan rather than Carter. So they're actually manipulating election results. Right. Uh, the CIA has only gotten more brazen since Alan Dulles <laughs> right. was the head in 1953 uh, and more powerful. And, and that, is, that is kind of clued in. We're clued in on that. We talked about this book a little. Uh, Fletcher Prouty was very high in Army intelligence, and he wrote a book called The Secret Team, the CIA and its allies in control of the United States and the world. <laughs> wow. So that gives you a sense. I mean, you know, and he talks about how the CIA got the whole Vietnam War, War going from the very outset, you know. And, you know, it just answers a lot of questions for us uh, who, who live through these things without getting the straight story. Right. And now we're trying to kind of catch up and get that straight story. But uh, so, and meanwhile, uh, the, the U.S. government was also arming a group of terrorists in, uh, in uh, Nicaragua who, who were hired by the U.S. CIA and others uh, to overthrow the leftist Sandinista government. And they figured, well, why not? Well, and of course, the Congress had passed the Bolin Amendment saying, you can't do that, Reagan. Reagan, you can't start a war in Nicaragua. Reagan was pounding the drums, and they said, no, right. we, we vote no. Well, it didn't stop them. They no. went right ahead, and they did all this covertly. And they had Joseph Coors airplanes, you know, taking guns down there. And they thought, well, let's complete the loop here. We'll, we'll, we'll take private groups and the military. We'll bring lots and lots of guns to the Sandinistas, and we'll train them over here in the country next door, which is Honduras. And then we'll send them in there to just wreck the economy of, of Nicaragua, which they did. And uh, and impose a terrorism on the people for sure. Sure. Uh, and uh, you know low intensity conflict and out and out war. And meanwhile, let's complete the circle by you know bringing lots and lots of drugs back into this country in CIA DC-10 airplanes, flying them into Mena, Arkansas, among other places, while Bill Clinton is the governor. Right. And then flying all those drugs over to San Francisco, and then down to Los Angeles. Right. And fueling the crack cocaine boom for the black people, and in other words, they're they're always wanting to destabilize things. They're uh -huh. always wanting, you know, the uh, there's lots of acronyms for the CIA. You know, uh, chaos inducing agencies, criminals in action, cocaine in America, right? Cults in America, these kinds of things. I mean, they're quite more accurate, you know. Right. But, uh, so all this was going on then back in the '80s under Reagan, which is really under Bush because he was the guy with the you know, with the contacts, and his brain was working a little better. I, I don't know how much, but working better. Right. And, and so at that point, Rumsfeld and, and Cheney are fairly young guys, and they're also working on these continuity of government, suspension of, of the Constitution of the United States. And uh, so they know all the protocols. Well, in the 90s, those two guys go into business. One's head of Halliburton, and I think uh, Cheney was head of Halliburton, big oil uh, servicing right. operation that made out like a bandit in Iraq, of course, and uh, got all the contracts on no bid contracts. Uh, so we're talking phenomenal corruption here. And then uh, Donald Rumsfeld, uh, I think a Searle chemical company, who was CEO of that, and there's pictures of him shaking hands with Saddam Hussein as he's selling him all these chemical warfare uh, yeah. chemicals. This is when he did, this is when he got aspartame approved. Yes, as per time, but things more deadly yet. Yeah, you know, including the chemical weapons that we actually did. So, you know, we know he's got chemical weapons because we sold it to him. Right. You know? <laughs> we have the receipts. Anyway. Yeah, we got the receipts, right? You're right. So anyway, the, the, Rumsfeld and Cheney then were in on the ground floor of planning continuity of government. It just so happens that on the day of two thousand one. They're both back in action in Washington, D.C. Cheney as Secretary of Defense, and, or excuse me, Cheney, Cheney was Vice President, Vice President. Yeah. as Secretary of Defense. Right. And uh, these were the guys who took over 
the continuity of government operations from Washington, D.C. Right. Isn't that another coincidence? It's amazing. So, so, so that's, that's my real hypothesis, is that 911, among other things, an excuse to go to war in the Middle East and just take over the whole area uh, and impose a draconian police right. state at home in America with, you know, the Patriot Act and all these other acts, also practice for the coming event, which a terrorist event, which might make 911 look pretty small. Now, this is where it gets interesting, because if these guys are willing to, you know, go to nuclear war with Russia and China off this operation, what are they willing to do on the next one? And my my gut level, no proof at all, I've done a little research on, on Operation Bluebeam, which is... So have we. Uh, yeah, faked alien attack. Yeah. And, um, and or faked second coming of Christ. Or which, both. Or, or both, yeah, right. which, which then would... Uh, usher in the continuity of government, the, the, the completed coup of Wall Street and the rogue network, the invisible government taking over constitutional Republic of America and having their way. Now, unfortunately, when you listen to the, for the uh, uh, YouTube uh, presentation on, on the doomsday plan, America's doomsday plan, they started with saying, we're looking at the killing off of three quarters of the American people. That's the first thing that's on that. Check it out, the YouTube. The America's Doomsday Plan. There's a guy saying that. That's the first thing. And then he gets into the, you know, Cheyenne Mountain bunker and, you know, the three-foot door and, right. you know, all, all this incredible Air Force power in the world. Well, I mean, I, he doesn't explain where the three-quarter loss of our population would actually come from. He doesn't right. tell us what, what would cause that. But, but they're planning for that, you see. Right. <laughs> So I don't like that they're planning for that. No. And, uh, because bottom line, America is the world power. And if it happens, it's because we made it happen. Mm -hmm. uh, it, by the way, the tools, two schools of thought on the 911 from the 91 Truth Committee or Truth Movement is uh, make it happen on purpose, my hop, and let it happen on purpose. And for a long time there was a debate, but there's no debate. It's make it happen on purpose, my hop. That's right. what it is and always was and always will be. It was an inside job. It was a also a psyop. It was mm -hmm. trauma-based mind control to get the Americans to go on with you know, go along with these wars of revenge against that bad Osama bin Laden, and then pretty soon Saddam Hussein was responsible for the 911 attack. So now we got to go get Iraq, and that's all based on just pure lies. You know the, the cooked intelligence that Saddam had nuclear weapons. He didn't have nuclear weapons. He didn't have squat because. Right. In the 1991 war, when George Bush's father took out, uh, you know, Iraq and right. in uh, in the operation in the Gulf War, uh, Operation Desert Storm, what they what they, uh, they had a no-fly zone imposed for 10 years. They're bombing the hell out of the people of Iraq. Oh, they'd already killed one and a half million people in Iraq right. by the time we invaded again in 2003, and now I'm sure there's probably three or four million dead. Out of a country of 22 million, uh, there's only 18 million left. Right. So that's genocide by any stretch of the imagination. So our nation, our tax dollars, we have to admit this. We have to own up to this. Right. Our tax dollars have paid for uh, the genocide of four, probably four million Iraqis in a most uh, you know horrendous uh, way of suffering. Uh, you know, there's an old saying: "Killing one person is murder." And killing a, a million is uh, foreign policy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm afraid that's, that's, you know, Americans buy it because our experts tell us it's okay. Well, all of this is to preserve, according to Tarpley, the, uh, the Anglo-American alliance, the British uh, City of London alliance yeah. with Wall Street. So anyway, that's, that's, I thank you very much, Paul. I, I really enjoy our back and forth. But now that I've laid out, I think, this scenario, this hypothesis, let's, if you, let's, let's hear from you, see what you think. Okay. okay. Well, this sounds uh, a lot more than just a hypothesis. It sounds like proven dead to rights. If there was some way to prosecute these guys, if there was a, a, a court in the world, uh, in the United States, you could bring these guys to justice. We certainly have them have a case uh, simply based on these 46 exercises. 
Yeah, I, I think that this is some of the best, <clears throat> most solid evidence out there. Um, and, and yeah, if you see an exercise going on uh, at the same time as a terrorist event, right? it's, it's, it's a, is it, what is it, a, a slam dunk. Right. You know, that, 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 that drill went live. You know, this is, this is not possibly a coincidence, all that, that's the way the press, you know, tries to spin these things. Right. Well, what would, you know, you said uh, when we were going through this, that the odds of all these things taking place on the same day, and uh, it's just, it's just amazing. It's, it's way beyond coincidence. It would be one in hundreds of millions odds, yeah. odds of that yeah. happening. Yeah, I think it's not even possible. No, <laughs> I don't think zero. it is. And you add this with the with the fact that there was no evidence of a plane crashing into the Pentagon uh, or in Pennsylvania. Uh, or in the World Trade Center. Uh, world, the planes did not hit the World Trade Center. I believe in my, uh, my website has an article about faked video uh, images of planes inserted into a false... Uh, photographic uh, image of downtown Manhattan that day. Um, be easy for somebody at a computer station to just insert a false image. And then, of course, this is really a made-for-TV event. Right. Uh, and then you have your actors on the ground right. uh, coached as to what to say when, and the, and the CNN and Fox News are, are the principal uh, uh, news uh, agencies that are in on it. Right. Uh, and then, of course, they put out the images and everybody else takes those images. So pretty soon it's a monolithic story. Right. We watch those towers come down again and again and again. That's the trauma-based mind trauma. control part. That's yeah. right. Yeah. There is a YouTube that I've seen where somebody analyzed one of the planes coming in and uh, they screwed up and uh, one of the, one of the uh, wings goes behind a nearby building. There Did you, you see that one? I it's, didn't see that, but I've, I've, I've seen the evidence of video fakery, and I, I'm convinced by it. Uh, I, it's impossible for a, a, a plane made mostly out of aluminum uh, to actually punch a hole in a building made out of concrete and steel. Yeah. Uh, and this, these are two of the strongest buildings ever made uh, in 1976, and, and many people think they were actually engineered to come down. Uh, the Rockefeller oh. built them. Sure. And uh, yeah, and uh, many people think that they, you know, that this plot was already planned back when they were built in 1976. Yeah, well, 30 years. Yep. They probably started the planning when they started the building. Yeah, well, I always think it's like a. I've worked for a lot of aerospace companies, and it, it would be like uh, a, taking a beer can and slamming it into a concrete wall. I mean, they planes are made. <laughs> right. They're made to be right. light. And, and right. yeah, so exactly. So it's 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 totally off the wall. I think that uh, that this is such important information that you and Webster Tarpley have put together. That you know, it's it's undeniable evidence. It's all um, based on documented facts, newspaper articles. Um, I it blew me away with the NORAD blips. The fact that they put blips on a radar screen. I mean, that's got to be a, a major offense in, in, any, in any court of law to, to do that because you can really do some major harm. So, go ahead. No, you please. Yeah. Well, if, if, I, I don't know whether we're going to get much traction on pursuing the 911. I mean, people, they've, they've even made a museum, you know, where at, at, at Ground Zero where this whole thing took place. And it reinforces the the story of what happened. Right. Yeah. So so, so I, it's going to be very difficult to pull the public off of this one. But the one we can really prepare for, which is the one you mentioned before, we've done some some videos on it. The Project Blue Beam, Alien Messiah, intergalactic war kind of scenario. And as you said before. If you think 911 was amazing with 46 coordinated uh, uh, exercises 
it's going to be nothing compared to this one where you're going to see holographic images, uh, voice to skull uh, transmissions, and uh, it's going to be amazing. People are predicting something like that for the day before the election, actually. Just. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, and of course, that's the reason why I think it's worth. Uh, our time to try to expose these things. The more people that uh, can kind of penetrate this fog of disinformation to the real story, right. uh, the, the, the better, well, the less the, the cat catastrophe might be. Right. Um, I, I mean, it, it, I don't know why, but that three quarter figure of the American population kind of sticks in my mind, you know, and, and, uh, I know that this is what New Agers have been calling for for a long time. Mm -hmm. So there is a religious component behind this that we, we really need to uh, not ignore. Um, this is a very, very well thought out takeover plan by a you know, fairly small minority of, of uh, people on the planet. I happen to think that many of those people are kind of commandeered by uh, powers and principalities right. of the dark side. Uh, I've, I've got a whole series on the New World Religion. And, uh, you know, you go back in history and you see that these secret societies, um, you know, Theosophy, etc., Madame Blavatsky, and, you know, Order, Ordo Templi Orientis, right. and all these secret societies, the Illuminati, the big one, uh, they're very much into uh, theurgy, which is channeling spirits. Right. And for the power that it's going to give them. Well, and then George Bush and his father would have, you know, laid in the coffin uh, at the tomb at Yale University to go through the initiation to become members of this elite skull and bones society. Right. Well, some people think that that is simply the American extension of the Illuminati. Well, they, they both call themselves the Order of Death. Right. Um, and uh, so these people... You know, they love it. They love death. They get off on death. The more people they can kill, the better they are. There's a, there's a science in the military now called thanatology, the science of death. And you get people like, uh, you know, uh, uh, Kino, you know, who's uh, very... Uh, Michael Aquino. Uh, yeah, uh, what's his first name? Was it, isn't it Michael? Yeah, Michael Aquino. He, was, uh, he founded the Temple of Set, which is, you know, blatantly satanic organization. And it's recognized religion in the Pentagon. Yeah, he. I heard so, that he got thrown out of the Church of Satan because he was too evil. <laughs> I can believe that. He, he was at the Presidio in in, uh, in California, right next to San Francisco, right in San Francisco, and he was accused of uh, a lot of systematic molestation of children. Um, yeah. You know, the whole bit, rape and, you know, torture and everything. Um, this is where a lot of this comes from. It comes from pedophilia. It comes from um, trauma-based mind control of children. Uh -huh. uh, I've got a, a, uh, an article on my 911 New World Order site about the history and application of mind control. And again, this goes back, way back, thousands of years. The Illuminati families are certainly involved in this, and they do it to their own children. Absolutely. And so their own children would be then fractured personalities, which would have... You know, this, this, they remember the two headed eagle and the, you know, the Janus figure with two heads. Well, many of these Illuminati are just, you know, a Catholic priest or a Protestant minister in their, in their, you know, nice life. Right. And then in their, you know, in their occult life, they're going to rituals and sacrificing babies. Right. You know, I mean, you couldn't ask for a crazier scenario than what we have in the world we live in. And, yeah. um, of course, this is below the surface. I remember quoting last a couple times in one of our interviews uh, uh, an article in Time magazine to understand what happened to Jean Benet, uh, the right. little girl out of Boulder, I think, uh, who was uh, killed, uh, is to understand the world we live in, and we cannot conceive of evil, uh, such an evil. That's right. It's very dark. It, very, very, very dark. So, um, you know, this, everything comes from something. And, uh, you know, I think the people at the top of these institutions, well, the CFR, you know, mm -hmm. 4,000, 6,000 members of the CFR, they would commandeer all these major institutions. Right. Who are those guys? How did they get where they are? And what's their network, you know? Right. And does it, 
does it include this network of secret societies and pedophiles? And I think it does. Uh, and I think some of the products of that nowadays, uh, Obama himself may be uh, a victim of uh, that kind of childhood, it might be completely mind controlled. That There's a book about that. <laughs> oh, I, I don't think you'd have a person this close to, to implementing the world order. I don't think you'd have anybody that had any mind of their own in a position like that. I think right. he's he's absolutely mind control on some level. I was listening to an interesting uh, a YouTube video last night by a guy named Dr. Cat-Eye, yeah, uh, Mr. Cat-Eye. And he was talking about this, uh, there's a quote in Ecclesiastics. Ecclesiastics, um, Ecclesiastes, yeah. Yeah, and it talks about powers and principalities. Well, right. come to find out that powers and principalities are levels of angels. They're levels eight and nine under you know, the seraphim, the cherubims, and the powers and principalities. So, so we're up against, I, I mean, I, I really hope that this video wakes people up to what happened on 9-11, what they're capable of, and now with a, with a uh, totally mind-controlled population. I mean, you look at these social justice warriors and how their mind processes uh, what's going on. You don't have people that can even think now. So, so we have a population that's unable to think. We have a government that's uh, very much controlled by a dark, dark force. I mean, and it's coming out more and more. Uh, so what they can pull off now with Operation Bluebeam is, is going to be totally, totally amazing. And I don't even know how you get ready for it. You know, you talked about a great population decrease. Dr. Deagle, Deagle, do you know who that is? Mm -hmm. He came out with uh, statistics, projected population statistics, and the United States dropped by about a, uh, two, uh, it's either one or two-thirds. Uh, so they're, they're predicting a major drop in population. So whatever happens will probably happen on American soil. Uh, and we're, we're the people that produce the, uh, the video uh, the video uh, false flags. I mean, this 911 was totally a CNN. Well, you know, uh, it was a. Uh, it was given to the public by a, a, a very much controlled uh, uh, news media. Yeah. So here, so we're so we're really set up for something major now, and we should all be. Uh, it, it's no longer, a, uh, you know, research this and research this. It's no longer a hobby now. It's going to be a big part of your life, and you really need to catch on to what's going on, what's been done to you, uh, and now what they're planning. Do you want to talk a little bit about what you know about Bluebeam? And we can go through that. Well, on my website, 911nwo.com, I quote a fellow named uh, William Ross Dean. Or maybe I think it's William Dean Ross. <laughs> okay, one of the other. It's, it's it, you know these intelligence. Uh, maybe this isn't the best uh, example because sometimes these intelligence uh, operatives uh, will ad case officers will adopt a name with two first names in a row. This guy's right. got three first names in a row. But uh, anyway, he says he was a psychic warrior back in the late 1990s, and he was involved in a lot of the remote viewing and uh, um, really psychic uh, warrior stuff. And he was privy to some of the kind of New Age plans, which merged New Age thinking with our Department of Defense in order to, again, depopulate the world. Because right. they, 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 you know, they, they think there's too many people. Uh, and not only that, we don't, they don't need us anymore because they're going to have robots and uh -huh. uh, already do and cyborgs. And they've been working on this for many decades. Uh -huh. So... Uh, it's, you know, it's just time to get rid of those pesky human beings and, and evolve to the next level. So you get people like uh, Barbara Marks Hubbard, the New Age lady, who's also in this, you know, Earth Battalion with the U.S. Army. That's, you know, and she's made statements like, well, you don't have to worry about choosing who's going to live and die. We'll do that for you, you know. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that's, that's our job. And she couches this course in, in all of this New Age terminology that humans are evolving now to a new species, a higher species, and we're going to have to get rid of those people who can't ascend 
you see, ascend to the new higher levels. And so there's this, there's this whole new age uh, ideology, methodology, and, and rhetoric behind what's going on right. with the military, um, or what the military evidently is planning on. And, uh, you know, U.S. is now the superpower. We have our bases and our troops in, I think, you know, 160 out of 195 countries. Uh, we've got our bases surrounding Russia and China. Right. There's a funny little uh, cartoon that says, you know, why did Russia put their country so near our base? Right. <laughs> we got well, all I've seen that. Right on plans, you know. <laughs> well, I mean, this is to take over the world, you know, obviously. This is the new world order. This is the plan. Right. This is the long-term Illuminati plan, I think. This is the, uh, you know, the Masons, the Zionists, the Illuminati. This is the secret societies. This is the people who want it all. Um and believe they're gods, you see, because, you know, we're not, and they are. And, of course, that's a load of, you know, that's yeah. <laughs> garbage, you know. But that's what they tell themselves. And, of course, it's the lie that the serpent uh, gave to Eve in the garden. You know, you can be as gods, and, uh, and surely you will never die, and all this stuff, you know. So these guys have bought into that lie. They're Satanists, right big time, at the top. And uh, I don't see them turning into nice guys next week. You know, I don't see them going to a, you know, a, you know, twelve-step program to become human. Human beings. Yeah, and <laughs> I don't see it happening either. The, the New Age religion really parallels Satanism so many ways. The basic yep. pre uh, tendencies or are, are tenets are the same. Uh, the worship of the Creator, making God out of out of people. Uh, uh, moral relativity. Uh, you know, everybody has their, the, everybody's right from their standpoint. There's no right and yeah. wrong. And what's That's the, uh, what's another one? Um, it's your truth, yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, well, uh, social Darwinism. They need Darwinism so they can say, well, we're, we're better than you. That's why we can decide who lives and dies. And uh, that's why we can execute eugenics against you useless eaters. Well, now that's, that's a good point. I mean, who's, who's the father of modern eugenics? Well, it goes back to the Rockefellers in the early 20th century. Absolutely. And they handed it off to Hitler, who took it another step. And then those uh, Hitler Nazi uh, psych psychiatrists and, and right. monsters like uh, Joseph Mengele, uh, and, uh, well, then the space program, Werner von Braun and all those guys, uh, 5,000 Nazi scientists were smuggled into the Americas through Operation Paperclip, which is well known now. Right. Um, and uh, this then became the basis of the CIA's MK Ultra and other mind control experiments and programs, which just made it more uh, kind of scientific. But, you know, it, to tell you the truth, Paul, it's, uh, I wasn't really sure that Satan existed. But after I read this stuff about mind control, I have no doubt. Yeah. There's no way that you could, you could, a human being could do that to another human being if he was not satanically energized. Right. It is so brutal and cruel. It's so off the chart. Uh, people need to realize that Satan exists. And he's been around a long time. He's smarter than us. Very devious, and of course his main tools are deception and terror, right. which, which uh, our own government now does uh, very well, deception and terror, uh, to control us. So I'm afraid, you know, and, and I think the real question for you and I now is, okay, now what? What do we do right. now that we know this, you know? Um, well, obviously education is very important. I don't know, as you say, if you can prepare for this. Um, you know, getting a bunch of, you know, cabinets full of food and getting some extra water bottles, uh, it doesn't seem like it, you know, might do that much good. Right. But uh, hold your place, I think, is important. I think keep your faith is important for me. Uh, me too. I believe that God is, you know, greater than anything that Satan can do. Uh, but also realize that Satan thinks he's going to win this final battle. Right. And that's one of the reasons why he's made all these satanic super soldiers because he only got one-third of the fallen angels, one-third of the angels, according to the Bible. And so his troops are kind of a little weaker than God's, you might say. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. So he wants to get all these other, you know, satanically energized uh, beings on his side, and he, he, he intends to win. Right. And uh, I, I don't believe he will. I do believe that the Book of Revelations kind of maps out the... Uh, uh, 
you know, the, the, the storyline and, and the ending, um, fortunately for us. You know, in other words, we, we can have faith that, that uh, the good guys, God, Jesus, Jesus will, will triumph in the end. Um, but meanwhile, we've got some hard times, uh, probably right. not too far from the right. future. We had, uh, well, I want to go in a little bit to Project Bluebeam. They're going to use holograph. A holographic images in the sky, voice the skull uh, to make you to give you thoughts to make you think that God is talking to you. I don't know whether they're going to stage a war. They certainly can uh, bring images into your house through coaxial cables, which is what they're planning on doing. Uh, it's a whole. Uh, it's it's trying to make you crazy so you don't know what to do and you'll. You'll happily sign up to go to a FEMA camp or go into New World Order. We had a, an interesting uh, Skype call yesterday from some people in a Nordic country. And they're starting to wake up to what's going on. And they were kind of panic-stricken. And they really wanted uh, Mindy and I to talk to them and calm them down. I'm not sure, I'm not sure we did. But one thing that we're all uh, kind of disarmed going into this thing because we're not languaged for dealing with a spiritual war. And that's also part of the, I don't know, it's a liberal agenda, the New Age agenda, I don't know what agenda it is. But they certainly have taken uh, Satan out of the vocabulary. People don't know who Lucifer is, even people that go to church, they don't realize that he's, uh, it's another name for Satan. Also, our culture is devoid of, of any type of concepts dealing with demons. And demons are a very real and key player, going to, going to be key players in this upcoming, upcoming deception. So I, I think one thing would be to, uh, what got me to realize it was uh, listening to Mark Passio, who used to be a satanic priest. And he's, he's broken from that, and he's, he's allowing us to see how they think and, and how, they, how they do things. And that really helped me language what we're going through and, and move toward listening, uh, uh, reading the Bible and understanding how it's scripted to go. And they, they seem to be pretty much following that script, um, I think. So, yeah, well, uh, you know, we all need our allies and we need our experts. Uh, we've got to cut through the garbage and get to the people who really know something. Right. And I, I have been very, very grateful to have discovered uh, Tex Mars of his right. Power of Prophecy program. I've got many of his books and I've got many of his uh, programs on uh, a CD. Uh, he, has, uh, he was a 22-year uh, Air Force officer. Uh, also, he's a Christian minister. Also, he's an expert on, on robots. Uh, he has been a college professor uh, in war game scenarios. So he, he always, even he says when he was a kid, has been looking at geopolitics, right. and combining it with biblical prophecy. And uh, the, the, I think he is a bit of a prophet himself because he's so well steeped in the Bible and in politics. He's, right. he's about, you know, he's several years older than me, but he seems to be going strong. You see him on lots of YouTubes on the internet. Uh, you know, look up Tex Mars and uh, you'll learn a lot um, of this background. He, he's been a real, he's written four books on the New Age movement. He exposed that. Um, so, uh, yeah, we need our allies. We need people we can rely upon. And, uh, um, that's, I think, the, the big, uh, big challenge is separating the truth from the lies. And, of course, Joseph Gables said, uh, well, you know, the truth is the greatest enemy of the state. So the state is coming down real hard on right. the side of the lies. And that's, that's really what the CIA and the media do. They lie. Right. And, and um, you know, of course, that puts us all at a kind of a disadvantage if we're looking over here and it's coming from over here, you know. Right. Right. Yeah. One of the things that I did that I did learn, and I do keep my eye on, and these uh, these gentlemen from uh, that, that talked to us yesterday, they said, "Well, what about all the holy books? What about the Bible and the Koran and the da 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 da? How how should we how should we approach them?" And my advice was, <clears throat> the only uh, individual that the satanic force Satanists mock, criticize, blaspheme 
is Jesus Christ. I mean, it's the only one. They don't have an issue with Buddha. They don't have an issue with uh, uh, Shiva, Ganesh, no problem. The only one they come after, the only one they blaspheme is Jesus Christ, which means to me that that's the other side of the equation. You know, if you're if you're looking at the Satanists in government and what they're trying to do to us and, and murdering and having sex with children and those things, I mean, you've got to know there's a morality, there's a right and wrong, and that's, that's wrong. Uh, and they're opposed to Jesus Christ, which seems to be the other side. Now, you know, I, I'm new to this Christianity thing. I think I, I finally picked it up in March last year. So, so I'm new, but it just seems to make more and more sense as we go forward and we're lost in a mix of uh, an incredibly powerful, deceitful government that controls the media and everything goes into our minds, that's controlled the school so much so that kids not only have moral relativity, but they have re reality relativity. They don't know what's real. So... Uh, that would be my only my only case for uh, for introducing Christianity or thinking about it. Besides the fact that it's the only uh, scenario with a positive ending. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. Well, that's a pretty that's a big one. Um, yeah, you know, it's the Bible is a very uh, interesting and and sometimes confusing document, but. Uh, uh, this is the conclusion that William Ross Dean, that psychic warrior, came to as well. He 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 got the heck out of the uh, the operation that he was in and became a Christian, and uh, you know he had seen the dark side and uh, right. realized that the only power that can overcome the dark side is Jesus Christ. And he, according to the New Testament, came to destroy the works of the devil. So uh, apparently, in a cosmic level, he has already done so, but. Um, there's yet to be another major battle, and yeah. uh, I do believe that uh, Christ will uh, emerge. I do believe that their goal is to usher in the satanic kingdom um, on the world. In other words, a uh, uh, very, very tiny elite rules. Everybody else is killed or is a slave. Right. Um, and uh, the, the elite will have everything. They will have all the resources. They'll have all the land. But it won't be very long, according to the Book of Revelations, that they that they uh, they're able to kind of uh, hold the power. They bring in their Antichrist, um, who appears as a wonderful uh, savior for many, but he's a false savior, and uh, right. uh, things only get worse from there. You know, so yeah, this is all kind of mapped out in the New Testament in the Book of Revelations. Um, whether or not one believes it is their own choice, but as you say, it. Uh, it almost seems like they're following the, the Bible as right. a roadmap. Uh, and, uh, you know, again, this combination of geopolitics and biblical prophecy of, of politics and religion. Right. You know, is, uh, is, is uh, what's happening. It's not just politics and it's not just religion. It, they're together. Um, you know, the Zionist movement is very critical in all of this. Uh, Adolf Hitler seems to have been possessed. You know, I mean, there's lots, lots of examples in which... <clears throat> um, and of course the evangelicals who are totally supporting Zionism and have just right. rewritten the Bible in their own, in their own for their own uh, you know goals um, these people are highly deluded it's a very very self-destructive right. delusion um, and they you know bought into prosperity consciousness and all this very anti-biblical right uh, we, we should really interject something about a uh, disclaimer about Christianity because uh, I considered it to be a relationship and not a religion because I know that religions have been the major mind control up to this point, up to the 21st century. Uh, all of these religions, including Christianity, I mean, if you look at the beginning of Christianity, it was made a state religion right away and used to control people by Constantine. And then down through the years, modified by uh, the various popes to uh, do various things. So, so it's very dangerous for us to say embrace Christianity. You have to be very careful because I would say, well, you know, there's 38,000 Christian churches on the world. And I would say most of them, <laughs> maybe 99%, are, are leading you uh, astray. There's, 
what is it, uh, 24,000 priests and preachers who have signed up to join FEMA and work in the camps when they take them in. And those people are, yeah, that's amazing. That's amazing. So, so if you're following them, you're going to be following them to a FEMA camp. So, so it's a dangerous thing to, for us even to recommend, but it's also dangerous for us not to, you know. So go ahead. Well, I think it's a great point. Um, Tex Mars, who, I, again, I listened to, he, uh, he started out as an evangelical when he got, you know, born again and saved. Right. Then he came to realize that the evangelicals were, you know, way off base on many things. They're following the Schofield Bible, which was written by a shyster, you know, who was paid by rich, rich Jews, really, to, to, to make a commentary that favored Israel and, right. uh, and, and just, uh, uh, just changed the whole you know, key meanings of the Bible. And subsequently, there have been many other translations. Right. And uh, Texas is one of these King James, <laughs> you know, kind of... Right. Uh, uh, he's a King James man, he says. But yeah, the Baptists, he says, the Southern Baptists, a very, very large component of the, the Protestant church, a very, very high percentage of the priests or the ministers are also Freemasons. And if one looks there at you the go. Freemasonry... You see that at the highest levels, well, even right from the beginning, people don't know it, but you're being initiated through steps into pure Satanism. It's right. based on the Jewish Kabbalah, which is a, a system of black magic that goes back to Egypt and Babylon. Right. And the, the Jews who were in their captivity in, in ancient Babylon, which is now Iraq, uh, learned this system of black magic from the priests of Babylon, and it was the worship of Baal, and it was the sacrifice of children. Right. Um, it was just a whole bunch of, you know, black magic incantation stuff. Well, Bill Clinton, Hillary Clinton, Madonna, Britney Spears, according to text, a lot of people are wearing the little red wristband, you know, little little right. uh, string around, I don't know if it's your right or left hand, but that's that's showing their, their uh, uh, into the Kabbalah. Well, Kabbalah is black magic. Right. It's it's anti it's anti reason. It's giving hexes to people, and uh, it's getting what you want through magic and manipulation. Uh, it's very very dark. And yes. uh, um, you know, uh, to have a Baptist minister who's also a Mason, he has to almost be double minded then too, because right. he's looking at the world through two different lenses at the same time which is strictly speaking, I don't think possible, but these guys learn to split their mind like that, and that really is the essence of Satanism, to be double-minded. And so that's why James in the New Testament, Brother Jesus said, uh, you know, don't be double-minded, you know. Right. Uh, be single-minded, you know, and follow Jesus. And uh, I, I totally agree with you. It's a relationship. And we can have the faith. It's, it's actually, you know, the, the doctrine that I, I tend to subscribe to is it's an act of grace on God's part that you will have faith. In other words, the initiating step comes from God through grace, and then you develop the faith. And, of course, if there's that instant of conversion, you know, you, you repent. And you say, right. hey, I'm not perfect. Uh, you ask for forgiveness. Right. And then you try to reorient your life along the lines of the Ten Commandments and Jesus' two commandments. Right. Love God and love your fellow man. Let's call it the Twelve Commandments. Right. Um, and, you know, we're all very imperfect, and it doesn't, uh, it doesn't mean that we didn't do rotten things along the way. What it means is those rotten things are forgiven by Jesus, right. who died in our place, essentially. You know, they call it the Holy Bible, and the idea is God's holy. So he wants, he wants holy beings in his heaven. Right. And and so this I look at this as kind of like our this is our pilgrimage through it's certainly not hell but it's a very interesting mix of heaven and hell here right. on this planet and uh, we get a chance to orient ourselves with kind of those two magnetic poles you know right God to the north and and if you will Satan to the south and there's a lot of people who are on that left hand path which is uh, right which is the path of black magic. Uh, um, and leads uh, to eternal damnation. So I personally don't see, you know, why people would make such a decision. But obviously, if you're in a generational family and you're brought right. up 
right. you know, with this kind of mind control, trauma-based mind control and abuse, um, maybe you don't have a choice. You know? right. I, think, I think that's what's really sad. The Illuminati families, the kids don't have a choice. They're, they're inducted into this with rituals, you know, going to sacrifices of human beings. And it's really, it's really hard to imagine. Uh, how, how bad it is. <laughs> right. Uh, even our culture that prides fame and fortune uh, is like a recruiting uh, mechanism for, for the satanic uh, elite because they can offer you that, you know, if you make the right deal with them. So, so the game's kind of rigged against us. And I think it's uh, very few of us lucky ones who are able to find our way out. And I would... I would hope that the people listening to this uh, find their way out too. Uh, Absolutely. It's, Absolutely. It's available to everybody, uh, unless you're, well, even we know people that are severely mind controlled. Uh, they have multiples, uh, and uh, they're trying to work their way, their way out of it. We started reading, uh, Mindy and I started reading The Brave New World again. If you want a sobering reality, just start that book and uh, you'll see what they have in mind for the human race. And uh, it's, it's shocking. And they're about to pull, pull some major stuff. If you thought 911 was amazing, you ain't seen nothing yet. This, this new, uh, it'll be an alien invasion. It might be a war. Uh, there might be a, uh, an alien messiah that comes in and takes over. Uh, I'm not that familiar with the Bible, but it seems to me there are several antichrists that show up. Do you, do you know, or does text talk about that? Yeah, I think through history, you know, uh, uh, I think, I don't know, maybe the Apostle Paul who says those who are not, you know, for Christ are antichrist. You right, know? So right. that means a lot of people uh, through history. And, of course, then Hitler's come along and they get, you know, labeled as the antichrist. Um but I, I tend to agree with, you know, the, the text that, you know, the real Antichrist of the Bible is going to be a figure. I uh, also believe that, you know, the beast that comes out of the earth and that comes out of the sea, there's going to be these holograms. This is going to be the image of right. the beast. We're going to worship the image of the beast. We're going to have to worship the image of the beast. So we're going to worship this thing in the sky or wherever it is that is actually not there. But there's a, it's kind of like, you know, the Wizard <laughs> of Oz, you know, right. doing the you know, working the, the dials and whatnot and projecting this image that everybody's supposed to worship, you know, and then really behind the curtain there's this, this little old guy, you know, who's playing with right. the dials. That's a really... <laughs> well, that little old guy's probably a giant mountain, you know. <laughs> <laughs> with the three-foot doors. Yeah, that's, right. that's, an, that's an amazing uh, little story about what's going on behind the curtain because there's nothing there. It's just a little guy. And what he's promising us is to fulfill our desires. What do you want? I want to be, I want to have courage. I want to have a heart. Well, you have it. You just have to turn and realize that you had it. God gave it to you. Well, yeah, you know, and I think that the, the author of that book, what is his bomb, was, was a, quite a theosophist. So he wrote a oh, whole series was. of books, the Wizard of Oz series. And uh, never really got rich, I don't think, but he... Uh, Put a lot of theosophy in those books. So if you if you go to another level, you'll see lots of uh, even satanic symbolism there. Right. Yeah, I, we should mention why well, since we brought up theosophy, <clears throat> this is a, a line of thinking. I don't know a philosophy uh, that probably was started by H. Uh, Blavatsky, and it followed down through. Uh, uh, Steiner, Rudolf Steiner was another theosophist, and I actually I, I know a lot about it because I started a Waldorf school once. Um, but there, it's it, her her publishing company was the Luciferian Publishing Company. So right from the beginning, they were laying the groundwork for the takeover of the dark side, and uh, they she went out and she reconstituted all the Eastern religions, which were being uh, which were losing losing con converts. They were people were becoming Christians, especially in Japan. Uh, Japan was becoming a Christian nation before we uh, bombed the two cities where were, that were the epicenters of the of the virgin Christian movement there. 
So uh, this, when when you when you have a, a religion, and usually most of the the New Age religions trace their lineage back to Theosophy or H. P. Blavatsky, either overtly or covertly, and uh, so so you need to watch out. For you, for your New Age gurus and and those things, I know that's. I, I hate to talk about that because it really, if someone's following a guru, it's like a cult of personality. You can't, you can't shake them loose. But uh, be careful. Yeah, when you read the uh, kind of the the thread of new, the New Age movement, you know, with Blavatsky and Alice Bailey and all her uh-huh. books, Alice Bailey and. Helen Blavatsky both claim to have channeled their books from a, a spirit being called Duo Ko, which they call the Tibetan. And it's a demon. I mean, you right. know, and of course, many other series of books like uh, Helen Shipman's A Course in Miracle, also, um, you know, supposed to be an alternative uh, Bible, really, uh, also channeled. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and uh, Eileen Cady over in Scotland uh, with the, I think it's Finhorn. Um, community. This was really organized by British intelligence. It was a, as a cult, and Eileen Cady was channeling these books from some entity. So you got a lot of channeled books, people who are automatic writing and being told what to say. Right. Well, that's another good, pretty good evidence that there are demon spirits, you know. Right. And uh, and they, there's a lot of them out there, and it's you know, you need to kind of find your uh, experts to, to deconstruct all the different New Age movements. Uh, Tex Mars, like I say, has written four books, and uh, Constance Cumbie has written a couple books on the New Age movement and the New Age religion. Um, and uh, it's, it's, a, it's a front for Satanism. You know, it's kind of soft Satanism, and then as you go in deeper, it's, it's just right. like the Masons. Right. Soft Satanism when you start and hardcore Satanism when you, when you finish, you know. Well, it makes you uh, really acceptable to that. I mean, there's no morality. Uh, it's all relative. Uh, talking of uh, The Course in Miracles, I, I had read that it was a CIA intervention. And I think so. It was at Columbia University. The CIA was all over Columbia University at that time. Yeah. And Marion Williamson, who is the, the, the major leader proponent of that, is a member of the Club of Rome, as, uh, as is Deepak. Tipak Chopra. By the way, you can find who's members of the Club of Rome. They've got a website. And if you look down through there, your guru might appear. Uh, <laughs> that's, it was, it was shocking to me to go through that list. I'm really glad you said that, Paul. Uh, let's talk about the Club of Rome for a second. This is one of the many globalist organizations, really a, kind of a cult by itself out of Europe. Um, and the, the the limits to growth book came out of there in the in the late sixties, I believe, which you know used all these computer programs to tell us that you know we're running out of resources and you better not have kids and you know the end is near, and and basically you know now it's of course none of those predictions came true, and now we see that these computer models can be used to snow us. Right. And of course, the global warming thing is all based on these computer model projections. And it all depends on the assumptions you put into the computer model. It's called garbage right. in, garbage out. But these guys are very allied with the United Nations, which is also very globalist and also very satanic at heart. And uh, and they're the ones behind the global warming scam. Okay? Absolutely. They have a political agenda. They, they're not scientists. They want to change uh, the world, you know, into the Agenda 21 of Marie Strong and the, right. you know, the Rio Earth Summit which is the agenda for the 21st century in which, you know, all the rich countries are going to give all their money to all the poor countries so we're all the same and, you know, and, and these guys are going to control through all these nonprofit organizations and whatnot. And it's all laid out in the, in the, in the uh, documents that came out of the Rio Earth Summit in 1992. And they are being implemented in this country right. and others, even though they were never passed by Congress or approved by the American people. In other words, it's soft law and it, it's adopted by the U.S. Forest Service, and it's adopted by the U.S. Park Service, and all this stuff. Right. So the, the Club of Rome very much figures into the global warming fraud. And guess what? I think the Air Force does, too. How so? Wouldn't it? Wouldn't it? Well, chemtrails. I mean, oh, yeah. Who's, 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 who's flying all those planes? Who's coordinating all the planes? 
got to be the Air Force. So here we have the Air Force as the main right uh, main factor in the execution of Operation 911. It seems we have the Air Force perhaps as one of the main executioners of the chemtrails, uh, the aerial spraying. We also have the Air Force involved in the HARP zapping and other right. things like that. They were, they were involved right at the beginning. And then it seems we have the Air Force involved in Operation Bluebeam. All this cosmic, uh, Absolutely. you know, galactica stuff, uh, Federation of the White Brotherhood and all this crap, you know. <laughs> uh, all this stuff that people believe, New Agers believe right. this stuff, you know. And they take names that are very, you know, biblical and satanic and they say, well, you know, this group is going to, you know, save the world. And, and uh, you know, we're going to channel beings from Arcturus, the kind of, you know, the, the star Arcturus, and we're going to channel beings from the... The constellation pleadings, there's the pleading, the pleadings. I mean, all this is around, right? And crystal probably bring this to the book. And uh, this was big in the 80s. But these people are just, you know, kind of, I think they're just kind of, well, they're marvelous, you know, because uh, what's being done is a psyop on, on, on us all, you know, to get us ready for this coup, this, this transformation of power from the duly constituted constitutional government of the United States, which actually is supposed to serve the people, the people in the government, according to the Constitution. And our rights are inalienable because they're going to do us from God. And and now, throw that system and come in with your satanic dictatorship, your one world government, one world religion, which is the bottom line behind the stuff. And uh, because they are so powerful, the Rothschilds, the Rockefellers, the Illuminati families, so rich, they gave all these other agencies to do pieces of their bidding. But I think it's with the help of these powers and principalities. I don't think these guys are smart enough to do all this by themselves. Oh, I don't think so either. I don't think, I think this is planned uh, highly above uh, Rumsfeld and Cheney. I mean, if you think that they could sit down and come up with a plan like this, I think you're giving them way too much credit. I think they're puppeted... Uh, the same as uh, as everybody else following these orders, and also I, I I just have to mention that you know there's a lot of people at work probably for the Air Force and the CIA that really think they're uh, serving the people, but when you start being an order follower, you get into a real uh, problem because you're not serving your own conscience and you're not you're not determining what's right and wrong. Somebody else is. And I'm of the mind that if you do something wrong, you can't say, you know, I was ordered to do this. It didn't work in the Nuremberg trials, and I don't think it's going to work uh, in any other uh, trial. I think you're responsible for your actions. And uh, if you're ordered to do something that's immoral, you're doing something immoral. Actually, I think that the ruling elite think that they're going to get off easy because they didn't do these things. They ordered you to do them. So we, I, I really blame the order followers. So if you're in a position, if you're in the Air Force, if you're in the military, and you're the order follower, you're the one in the eyes of God that's doing the action. So uh, wake up to that, to that reality. That's a very good point. As you said, the Nuremberg trial said, said that the German people guilty for the crimes that Germany did. Um, you know, and of course, a lot of the good Germans were what? You know, uh, you know, where I was just following orders. Of course, you, you know, in a fair Nuremberg trial, the, the, the American soldiers would have been just as guilty, you know. Right. To, you know, to take the loser and say you're guilty is just, you know, kind of. Right. Standard operating procedure. But, you know, in that regard, I think there's a very interesting experiment that Stanley Milgram did, a, a psychology professor, I think at Harvard years ago, and he set up an experiment which has been duplicated, replicated many times, wherein you have a scenario where a guy in a white lab coat is standing up and he's giving directives to another person who is actually the subject of the experiment, and that person is sitting in front of a board with uh, little buttons that he could push that are going to shock, electrically shock, a third person who is, you know, on the other side of a glass uh, in another room and there's a glass between you. And so the, the authority figure says, okay, now give him a, you know, six uh, shock. And right. the person down there, goes, bah! You know, it turns out the guy down there is an actor, 
you know, right. and, and the guy who's being studied is the guy pushing the buttons. And what they found out was that 70% of human beings will follow those orders and severely shock and or kill the the, uh, amazing. the the person. So in other words, they, they think in their mind, they transfer, well, okay, it's on you. Um, you're going to take responsibility for this, you know, and uh, they go ahead and do it. Well, that is a part of human nature that they have exploited. Right. They are exploiting now. Um, so we somehow have to wake up from that, that, uh, that response. Yeah, that's really great. Well, uh, we're going to have to end here. We're starting to great break up a little bit on our Skype, but okay. uh, this has been totally fascinating. And the first hour of this thing should make a major impact on everybody because this was the major trick, and it's going to be, and it's the minor trick compared to the one that they're going to pull off probably this year. So. Uh, uh, Really important discussion, Eric. Do you have any final uh, things you'd like to say? We're going to have your website listed below uh, so that everybody can go there. And uh, do you have anything to say? Well, I certainly want to thank you, Paul, for letting us, uh, giving me the opportunity to discuss this with you. Uh, I think our, our interviews and discussions are just uh, just great. Uh, me the too. back and forth is just great. And uh, so I would just say uh, thank you to you, and I would say uh, if people would look at my website, 911nwo.com, at the articles, the three articles that are posted most recently under Operation 911, they do give the information about uh, these 46-plus drills and give a context for that. Um, you know, the military guys, I think your point is excellent, the military guys who are carrying out these orders, you know, most of them you know, want to serve God and country. Right. But many of them wind up uh, very compromised by what they do. This is why people come back with, you know, shell shock from Iraq and Afghanistan. Not only they're wounded, but their their minds are, are shattered because right. things have not been, things are not at all as they were portrayed. They go in there thinking right. they're going to, you know, help Uncle Sam, and they wound up serving uh, Halliburton, Cheney's right. company, or some, uh, you know, the, the Wall Street uh, stock market or whatever, and then wind up killing people senselessly. And they have a moral compass, and that, uh, you know, causes a lot of suffering. Um, so I've heard that the returning veterans are killing themselves at the same rate as they're being killed over there. And right. this was close to being true also for the Vietnam vets. So modern war is hell. It's very high-tech uh, mass murder is what it is. You know, people pushing buttons, and they, they don't really see what's off. Right. Behind it. So, so I think people need to wake up to these realities, and I hope that the uh, information we passed out today will give a lot of people, or at least some people, a reason to uh, prepare uh, for more of these... Uh, insidious uh, and extremely catastrophic uh, uh, terror drills turning into a, a live terrorist operation and realize where the source is. That's right. Well, thank you very much, Eric, and I'm looking forward to our next discussion. Who knows what the topic will be, but I'm sure we're going to have fun, and I hope people have fun listening to them. Thank you very much, Eric.